Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. Today is March 31st. Today is the day that we have the beta version now available of the up and coming Ubuntu 22.04. Regardless on if you like the Ubuntu Linux distribution or not, uh, this release is kind of a big deal. There are gonna be a lot of Linux distributions that are gonna be using this as the base operating system whether that be Zorn, Pop! OS, or something with a different desktop environment, such as Farin OS, Kubuntu, whatever it may be. So when it comes to the actual release schedule, the feature freeze, so the halted introduction of new features, took place on February 24th, and then from there we had the UI freeze. So when we go ahead and explore this system today, this is what it should look like upon official release. Now that took place on March 17th. Today is the day of the beta, so you could go ahead and try it out. And then the kernel freeze, so the final kernel version after April 7th, that will be it. And then, like I said, the release candidate will be out on April 14th. Now, if you're somebody who's gonna be upgrading from 20.04 to 22.04, you're gonna get almost a completely new system. There's a whole bunch of visual changes. GNOME is going from 3.38 to GNOME 42. Wayland is gonna be the default now and a lot more. So what we're gonna do is dive into the system, check out all this stuff, but first we're gonna have to thank the sponsor of today's video, Linode. Now, Linode is a fantastic option if you're looking for a VPS provider to go ahead and spin up various Linux distributions on the cloud to host your services, websites, whatever it needs to be. Personally, I'm using Linode to host my main website, techhut.tv, and I actually used their one-click installer to set up Ghost, which was incredibly easy. They have a whole bunch of one-click web installers, so you can set up game servers, Nextcloud instances, media servers, code servers, whatever it may be, you could go ahead and set it up on Linode. They have a whole bunch of different features. They have block storage, dedicated GPUs, uh, shared and dedicated CPUs, Lots of cool things, and if you go ahead and use the link down below, you can get a $100 60-day credit to go ahead and try out Linode today. So right here, I went ahead and booted into the live environment. I did try to install it, but I have been getting a couple issues. We're gonna to try to work around that. First things first, I must note, the wallpaper of this jellyfish here is absolutely beautiful. Usually wallpapers aren't that big of a deal, but a reason why I bring up how wonderful this wallpaper is, is because we've gotten a couple cursed wallpapers since uh, Groovy Gorilla. Um, just with the Ubuntu wallpapers, it's it's definitely a hit or miss for what you're gonna get. This right here, this jammy jellyfish wallpaper is something I can actually uh, keep as that and not have my eyes feeling uh, violated. So there, there's other ones as well and they're just as nice. We have this one right here. And then of course we have some of the grayscale ones, really whatever you want. And like I said, sticking on the uh, aspect of appearance, we are running GNOME 42, I believe. If we go down here to about, we can see right here, we are running the GNOME version 42.beta. It's awesome they're going with this, so it's going to be moderately up to date, even though it's an LTS release. Right here, you see their new logo. I really haven't commented on that, but it's a uh, interesting, design choice if I'm gonna to try to be as nice as possible. Now, if we go ahead and go back up here to appearance, this is really nice. We have the option to pick between our light and dark theme and we have our accent colors. So this is starting to look a lot like those uh, Chinese desktop environments that have the really nice uh, settings panels. I think UK UI and Debian or not Debian, Deepin uh, kind of look like this. So if I go ahead and change this accent color here to purple, for example, you can see it automatically shift over here as well as on these icons. We have the Nautilus icon here has a shift as well as the Ubuntu software center. And then we have some basic options for our desktop icons, the dock. So we can go ahead and change the icon size, pick what display it shows on or all displays if we would prefer. Uh, the size or the position on the screen, behavior, auto hide, just a bunch of basic features. So I went ahead and uh, rebooted the system here and we're gonna go ahead and try to install this. So let's go ahead and double click install Ubuntu 2204 LTS. Oh, and here it is. I think this is the new uh, Flutter installer, which Flutter is a code base uh, by Google. So it's it's pretty interesting that they're including this. I've talked about this a couple different times in the past. Oh, sad day. All right, um, I'm gonna restart and try this again and um, we'll see. <laughs> but this is the first time that we've seen it on a uh, official usable capacity here. So let's continue through this. We have English, English sounds good. 
Uh, let's go ahead and use our wired internet. We're gonna go with the normal installation and we're gonna erase the entire disk and install Ubuntu. So that is looking good. Let's start installing. So where are you? This is kind of close to my location. I don't really see a map coming up, so I'm not sure if, I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a map there. Um, let's see if this pulls up. Oh, it did. And America, Los Angeles, that's the proper time zone, so we can continue. And I can fill this out real fast. There we go, I am indeed Brandon Hopkins. I'm gonna name this computer Jammy. And then let's go ahead and continue. And here we go, so now it's going. We can see the little uh, terminal on the bottom here. Fast and full of new features. We have a little slideshow. It's weird they have the, uh, what, what was that? Uh, something emu. Uh, this is one of those uh, cursed wallpapers staring right into your soul. If we go through, they have uh, some information on their software center. It's a little laggy. I don't want to start clicking around too much. All right, and it's just about done. Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. I wonder how many times I'm going to say that in this video. Is installed and ready to use. I do have to say the appearance of this is much better than the uh, old one. I do like it. The only thing I noticed that wasn't working that we saw was the map. So let's go ahead and just uh, restart this and jump into our actual install of this system. All right, we got our new install booted and we got the resolution and all that fixed. So we have the connect your online accounts. We have Microsoft, Google, Ubuntu, single sign on. Gonna go ahead and skip that. Uh, help improve Ubuntu, sure, why not? Privacy, I always enable location services mostly because I like the uh, weather applications just to work properly. And uh, software ready to go, they are recommending code, Microsoft Teams, Android Studio, a bunch of cool stuff here. Uh, Ubuntu Pro is available for your computer. Oh, we have an error. <laughs> What's Ubuntu Pro? Am I just out of the loop? Hold on. Uh, Ubuntu Pro, uh, Pro subscription. Let's check out more information. Um, receive security updates for over 30,000 packages. So it's probably just like a server grade subscription service. Advantage for infrastructure. Okay. So we get security updates for OpenStack, Kubernetes, uh, 25 bucks a month for desktop users up to 300. And then they have physical servers, virtual servers, uh, just a little extra thing. Another way for them to attempt to make money anyways. So with that, I'm going to close this out for now. Ready to go. We are done. Let's go ahead and jump back into settings real quick and check out what's going on with this system. So if we go to about, you can see we are running Wayland. We're running the GNOME version 42 beta Ubuntu Jammy Jellyfish. This is the developer branch. It's March 21st right now. So I'm recording this a little bit early. So there might be some small changes. But like we said, theoretically, they're not supposed to introduce any features or change the UI at all. Oh, I can't open the welcome application again. You saw the new Ubuntu logo looked really bad on that sidebar there. Let's go ahead and check out some of the applications. First activities, we have the horizontal thing that comes with GNOME 42. But if I go ahead and click down here, this will be all of our applications. We can see some of the icons are different. Software updates and software updater are uh, a little bit more obvious in their differences. We ship with transmission. We have to do here. If we go up, we have Sudoku, uh, the startup disk creator, a lot of the basic stuff we would expect as the LibreOffice suite. Uh, if we go back to this front page here, let's go ahead and open up something. So we have calendar here. Let's see what version of the uh, GNOME calendar they're using. So if we go to about calendar, you can see that they're using 41.2. And based on my reading, there is going to be that mix between slightly out of date uh, GNOME 40, 41 applications and uh, GTK4 stuff that's all being introduced, mostly introduced in uh, GNOME 42. We go back over here to applications. We have additional drivers. We have the text editor. So this should be completely replacing gedit. I want to see if this is, oh, it's just pulling up as gedit 41. So I'm not sure if this is going to come with this release. It's on a freeze now. So I don't think they're going to be shipping with that new text editor. It's it's basically the same thing, but there are some key differences, primarily under preferences. The preference menu is a lot better in that new one. So there are some things that are going to be held back when it comes to how up to date everything is. So another one, if we go ahead and open up calculator here, for example, and we went to about calculator, this is also going to be on GNOME 41. Now, one thing I'm kind of curious about, this is a virtual machine, so kind of take this with a grain of salt, but let's see how some of this resource uh, consumption is. So we're gonna open up HTOP here. I could have just opened up the GUI version. Uh, 1.14 gigabytes of RAM, so pretty typical for your Ubuntu install. I'm gonna close the terminal out. And you've probably seen throughout kind of running around on this system, there is a, uh, the, I think their default theme, what is it called again, Euro? Yaru? 
yeah, Roo's got some updates too, so it just looks a little bit better. One application that did get updated is if we go to the take a screenshot tool, this is looking pretty good here. We can move our little section around. We could switch this over to video if we'd like to, to uh, take a screencast of a specific area or the full screen, of course, or windows. And then we have the option here to disable or show that pointer. So some pretty cool stuff coming to this version of Ubuntu. Let's check out the store real quick to see if there's any significant differences. Not a whole lot has changed. A lot of under the hood things. But really, if you're talking about the uh, last non-LTS version of Ubuntu, there hasn't been too many things that are uh, super new or exciting other than maybe going to GNOME 42. But like I said, even with that, some of the applications are getting held back with their versions. So with that, I do hope you have a fantastic day. I will leave links down below so you can go ahead and try this out if you would like to. Like I said, the beta should be available. If not, it's going to be available later today. I'll leave a link to that or the daily builds if the uh, beta isn't available quite yet. So uh, again, beautiful day. Big thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. And again, make sure you check out the link down below to get your $100 60 day credit over at Linode. And with all that, goodbye.